people made a way and and um, and follow through on a dream that was outside of the structure of what seemed possible to people who were in power. Um, it didn't seem possible that this public school could stay open. Um, it didn't seem possible that it could stay here as an educational resource. Um, it didn't financially work. Um, and so it was closed as a school. Um, our moms in the neighborhood, regular citizens and folks um, who were taking the step in the direction of what was right, right for their children, right for their community, right for their city, um, they made a way where no one else was able to. Um, and we, all the work that we do out of Peasley, and when I say we, it's a big collective we. It's, it's Peasley proper and our programs here, it's growth groups that come in like our tenants like Intercommunity Justice and Peace Center and the Sustainable Faith Worker Center um, and the Center for Community Change all kind of trying to keep that pathway open and um, Peasley's always been founded too on the idea of there are dominant narratives and dominant voices and power structures and then there are narratives that are counter narratives that are positive and that are life-giving and sometimes they can get drowned out so we would really appreciate that a forum like this that's committed to not have, to having that space of positive things, um, that we can be a part of doing that. Um, so Peasley's been around for 31 years doing that work. Um, and one other thing about a place that's small and organic like Peasley is that we grow and change based on the needs of the community, based on who's involved, based on what's happening. So our programs aren't static here. Um, and the, um, some of the stuff that we'll talk about today, the question that was posed for the, um, for the presentation for today and for the panel is, is equitable development possible in Cincinnati? It's a big old question. Um, it might go along with our elephant of gentrification, which maybe Jenna Aaron can talk about a little bit, um, because this is from another piece of work we did, but one reason that Peasley started engaging in these conversations was because our urban core community and lots of other Cincinnati neighborhoods have been, been experiencing gentrification um, where the profits are, of some are, are taken care of and there's an ex, maybe an expectation of a trickle down and maybe not and that's just how it goes and that those losses are acceptable. We don't believe that they should be acceptable as a city. And we don't believe that it's just about over the run. It's, it's about how we choose to do development in all communities, in the city, and then also nationwide, because we are being looked to as an example for how to do it. Um, and we see firsthand um, how people are injured, how people are traumatized, how people are damaged as a result of the way that we have chosen to do business. So um, as most, positive things like citizens stand up together and they forge a new way and we have to show that to our leaders and give them strength to do the right thing um, and that's hard messy work and we and a lot of that work we started thinking about how to do that with residents of the neighborhood here and over the Rhine and there are vast divides in terms of race and class there's not a lot of middle ground in our community um, and how are we going to do that work. So we've been doing some work through a gentrification series on that um, for the last few months. And side by side, along with that, we've been working on campaigns with our kids in the neighborhood about these very processes of gentrification, not theoretically happening, but happening. Spaces and places and land and buildings being ripped out from neighborhood residents and told what you need does not matter. Um, so we've kind of been working that slow dialogue process and that really fast campaign process in the best possible way we can. We can't do it without partnerships. None of it would be possible without partnerships. And so different community groups do little pieces um, to try and make things happen. Um, so today on our panel, um, speaking today, and then we hope we'll have more conversation with you guys as well. Um, Ms. Sophia Cunningham. Uh, works at Over the Rhine Community Housing and runs an amazing program called Children's Creative Corners. You can talk a little bit about um, that and works directly with residents specifically up in the east, the North Rhine, East Clifton area, um, right next to Rosenberg School. Miss Alicia Ferguson um, is um, 
has done a lot of work on the Keep Our Courts campaign. Her son has participated in Peasley's Agents of Change program here, is a dedicated volunteer and mom and parent up at the um, Rosenberg Preparatory Academy just a couple blocks away, our last public school in Urban Rhine, um, and is also a community educator and community mentor at Peasley, helping to educate um, future teachers who want to teach in the urban schools what they need to do to really connect with their community and students. Um, and then Ms. Jen Ahrens is Peasley's Community Education Coordinator. And most of this amazing work that we're talking about, um, Jen facilitates and, and does that work with a number of other community residents here. Um, and has just been a real great asset to Peasley in helping us do this deeper analysis of what's going on in our city. Um, and then I'll just mention too in the back, Miss B.B. Lackey, um, who welcomed you when you came in today. All manner of things that have to do with organizing and welcoming and, and you know, going to community meetings. B.B.'s right there at the forefront. Uh, she asked if she could stay back there today, and I said yes. <laughs> but she's right now putting together valuable information for you guys uh, to take away about uh, this campaign. So we do it all here. Um, as a group. And of course, Bill already mentioned Miss Bonnie Newmeyer, who um, is a founding mom of Peasley here um, and still on our board of directors and does a lot of community education and campaign work on this and many other community issues. Um, and then Pat Youngblood, who runs our caregiver circle, which you'll be hearing more about that in the fall, um, who's doing organizing work around a different project for caregiving. So all these things are interwoven, but that's a little bit of you know some of the, what Peasley's been leaning into most recently. Um, so um, one of the one thing that we thought that we would do today is talk a little bit about the campaign. How many of you all have heard about the Keep Our Courts campaign at all? Like in the news, maybe or just a couple of folks. Oh, we need to we need some more media hit stuff out there. Um, yes. What was the name of the campaign? Um, it's called the Keep Our Courts campaign. Keep um, our what? Courts, 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 basketball courts. Oh, courts. Yes. Um, and so, essentially, uh, we are in the middle of a campaign that's been going for over a year um, to work side by side with um, Children's Creative Corner, moms up in North Rhine, East Clifton, Rosenberg Preparatory Academy, our kids that come here to Peasley programming to maintain and enhance um, some local basketball courts that are directly across the street from their school, a recreational space, a green space, and then there's a huge vacant tract of land. Um, about a year ago, a developer came to uh, via the Department of Economic Development and a developer called North Point came to the Community Council here in um, over the run with a proposal to develop 76,000 square feet of public land owned by the Cincinnati Recreation Department in the city of Cincinnati. Um, the proposal was for a project called Rothenburg Row. It was to be named after the school. 99% of our kids that go to Rothenburg um, are on free and reduced lunch, uh, live below the poverty level. Um, this development was going to be called Rothenburg Row to develop 21 single family homes, three to five bedrooms with a detached garage, $500,000 price point per unit, and then eight units of um, what they call workforce housing, um, which are one bedroom units for $950 that would fit the affordability yeah, criteria. The yes. And so they came to the community council, and when that they came to the community council to tell folks about that project, um, things that were there were things that were left out, like the fact that basketball courts were there, a community green space were there, and folks on the community council um, challenged that, right, and asked questions about it, um, and it, and so that kind of happened last February. And then the community got organized a little bit around it when they realized what all was going on. Um, and that's where uh, Children's Creative Corner, Sophia, and a number of other folks came in, so I'll let her take over. Mm -hmm. Jen, just one question. Yeah. There used to be a 